I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And I trust you're ready for a show today. We're going to have a show. And, uh, you know, we have one roughly every week. We try to have one every week. Sometimes it doesn't work. And if it doesn't, it means I don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> and that's always an issue. Okay? We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. We're also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Yes, indeed. Now, if you want more information about the show, you can always go to our website. The website is drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, as it says there on the screen. And I encourage you to go there. Now, the show today, we're going to have an installation and demo of a piece of software, an operating system that I've shown you before. But before you tune out, (laughs) hang in there. This update is most impressive. Uh, The last time we showed you Linux FX, which is a Linux operating system, that is designed to look like Windows. Yes, I said that correctly. It's designed to look like Windows. <laughs> we showed you the Windows NT version. Okay, this is the Windows 11 version. Windows 11. And these guys, I got to give them props. They have gone to a lot of trouble to really make this look like Windows 11. I mean, more than you would possibly imagine. And I'm telling you, if you didn't know, some of you would know, but if you didn't know that it wasn't Linux, you would think it really was Windows 11. And that's a good thing. Because we're trying to get a Linux that newbie former Windows users can move to Linux and keep their skills, you know, in terms of using Linux. And now that we've moved to Windows 11 in the in the Windows world, it needs to look like Windows 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to use VirtualBox. We're going to create a virtual drive, and we're going to install from the Linux FX Windows 11 lookalike ISO. And then from there, we're going we're gonna to cut out some of the installation to shorten it a little bit time-wise. But for the most part, it will be a walkthrough of the full installation. So let's look at that right now. All right, we're going to look at Windows Linux FX or Windows 11 <laughs> Linux FX, that version. So let's go here, and as we're starting to create the virtual machine, we're going to go out and find the download of the Linux FX 11 um, version here, version 2, 11.2.22.04.7. And we're going to give it, uh, we'll go ahead and leave it at uh, 2 meg, or 2 gig, I should say, and uh, we'll give it two CPUs here. And I'm just giving it kind of the horsepower it needs. 25 gig is plenty for the drive, so we're going to leave it at that and go ahead and hit next. And that looks good, so let's go ahead and start this virtual machine that we've created. And just going to pull out some windows over here to the side. We'll let those come out and close them as we have opportunity here because it's going to show us uh, little steps along the way of what's happening. But it's going to start the installation here from the ISO. 
and uh, we'll let that go ahead and run. And notice it already is beginning to look like a Windows installation with the Windows logo here. I don't know how they get away with that, actually. <laughs> you would think that's trademarked. But at any rate, they do have it there. Paying homage to Microsoft. Let's look at it that way. Uh, so it's starting up. And as it starts, it's going to go into a, a mode where it's going to run as a live, quote, CD, although we're booting off of an ISO image uh, within VirtualBox. Notice in the lower right corner of the screen there, it says powered by Linux FX. And then as it comes up, look at that. Doesn't that look familiar if you're running Windows 11? Now we're going to go ahead and click the install system to permanently, quote-unquote, install it onto this virtual machine. This is the Linux FX 11.2 installer. And I'm just clicking through here and accepting most of the defaults. We're going to go ahead and erase this disk because it is a new virtual disk. There's nothing on it. We'll fill out the information here, as you would usually do. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to my standard username. Dr. Bill, and let's change the name of this system to Linux FX. When I say system, obviously the virtual machine. We'll give it a password, but I'm not going to give it my regular password. I'm just going to put 123 in here. I know that's a terrible password, but, you know, we're going to blow this machine away as soon as I'm finished looking at it. But we'll go ahead and start installing. And as it installs, it's going to step through some images here, and it's going to step through the installation. Now, we're not going to take the time to just sit here and watch the entire long installation. You notice we're already at 6%, 7% of the installation. It's going to start jumping ahead as I skip ahead here, so don't let that concern you. See, we're all done at this point because I skipped ahead all the way to the end. Notice Restart Now is clicked, so when I click Done, it's going to restart the machine, <clears throat> and it's going to go ahead and reboot. As it does, since we left the ISO attached, it's going to say, oh, you've got installation medium installed or, or loaded. So I'm going to go over here, choose the drives, and remove the disk that we're installing from because we no longer need it. We're going to go ahead and boot here off of the virtual drive that we set up. So it's going to start a reboot here. And once it reboots, we're going to be coming into our real, and I put that in quotes, real <laughs> installation of Linux FX. So let's put our 123 password in here. And now we're coming into the system. And what you're going to notice is that the resolution is rather low at this point um, because the virtual machine was just set to a low resolution. We can fix that once we get into uh, the actual full Linux FX screen, which is painting now. Now, it tells us that some security updates are available. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that for now uh, because we can update it here a little bit later. Right now, I just kind of want to get into the main system. And so we're finally there. It says it needs to reboot. So we'll go ahead and let it reboot at this point. And uh, as I say, this is stepping through an installation. So if this were your physical machine that you were building Linux FX on, these are the steps you'd be going through. I've just cut out some things for time uh, sensitivity, but... Now that it's rebooted again, let's go ahead and do our password of 123. Again, not a very secure password, I know, but it's okay. Type that in, hit return. This is just a demo. And we're going to finally come in to our full Linux FX session. Okay, now let's right click with the mouse on the desktop and we can go into 
configure display settings and change the resolution and I'm gonna look for a uh, okay that looks good let's try that let's see what it looks like we'll apply that yeah that's that's not bad let's see if I can pull this out yeah there we go so now we've got the screen much bigger and I can rearrange the icons a bit here so that uh, it matches the screen we've got. I could just auto-arrange, but that's all right. We'll just pull them down here. And here we go. It looks just like Windows 11. Really nice. Now notice Google Chrome is already installed and Microsoft Edge is already installed. Now this is the real Microsoft Edge browser. Yes, I know it's running on Linux. But it's the Linux version of Microsoft Edge. So it's going to, as we start here for the first time for Edge, it's going to come up and welcome us. And we can accept that and get started. Now, I'm not going to step through all of this or sign in to sync my data. Normally, I would. If this were a real machine that I was going to use, I would do that. But we're just going to X out of this. So now we're into the browser. They're tooting their horn a bit there. Let's go over to the Dr. Bill site. DrBill.tv. And it should come up. Yep. There's our last show on the Comica Vimo C3 microphone system. We'll go ahead and go to a, another tab here. And, of course, Microsoft will put all of their news and information that they have from MSN in that tab. So we'll get out of the browser for right now. And let's go ahead and go down here and look at what we have available to us. We also have the uh, File Explorer, which they call uh, Dolphin. Okay, that's Dolphin is an open source project for a uh, File Explorer type, but it's the closest look and feel so they've included that in here. They also have a way to register it, but we'll go ahead and go into the system um, setup here. I don't want to call it system setup. Uh, it's just the system area. And here are all the options you've, you've got, network and internet, applications. We can actually look at installed applications here, just like you would in Windows 11. It's going to look a little different because obviously these are Linux applications that are installed uh, and, and the way they built it. So let's uh, go ahead and get out of that and instead let's go down here to privacy and security. Or uh, actually let's look at update because we already said we were going to check for updates. So let's do that. We're fetching our updates. And it's going to look at all of the installed applications on the system. It's going to look for security updates. It's going to look for everything that it needs, just like Windows 11 would for Microsoft. It's doing this pointing to the Linux FX servers. So now we're go going to go ahead and you've got to put in your password, 123 here, and let it start installing the updates. It's going to download them. You'll see the progress bars as it does that. And again, this is going to take a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip past this uh, on the video and exit out. And now no, you notice we're updating. It has a little indicator there. But I'm going to go ahead and go over here to notifications. And uh, yeah, still shows we're updating there. So basically shows the same thing. Um, so let's... basically get out of that. We don't need to see that we are now finished updating. So we'll close that out. And uh, you got your widgets area, you got your chat, you got the Dolphin uh, file manager. And let's open up what would be the Microsoft Store, except this is the Linux FX Store. This is where you would go to install software, just like you would use the Microsoft Store to install Microsoft software. So, you know, you can skip through all these different areas uh, that you can get software from. Let's take a look at Internet. 
qubit torrent transmission you can scroll down here and see all the different internet options we'll close that out and uh, we'll go ahead and shut this down now and power it off and that's our demo of Linux FX I trust you enjoyed it found it useful all right I trust you found that useful interesting and that you saw that it can be basically something you can use to replace Windows 11, you know, within certain parameters. <laughs> it works and acts and looks a lot like Windows 11. So if you're looking to make the transition to Linux, this might be something you want to look into. Hope you enjoyed that. Remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill, the Computer for Budget is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ding the bell to be notified of future videos.